approach? Another year, another tournament? You know, going in with this team, what, what do you think is going to be their biggest struggle, but also maybe their strongest thing going in with this team? Well, we're not big. You know, physically, we're not a, a, an imposing team that's going to block four balls a set every set we play. So you got to be pretty good defensively behind it. You've got to be really skilled. You've got to be pretty clean offensively. Uh, you got to serve and pass. And those are things that we've been pretty good at through most of the year. And, uh, we just needed to be really good at the right time. As a head coach, when you see, okay, we got a four seed, okay, we get to host, does that put a little excitement in your eye, knowing how your girls have performed on this floor? Yeah, I, I think they're excited about it. We're excited about it. Hopefully the, the crowd gets rocking, you know, and uh, we hope for an awesome student turnout. I love the Thursday night feel. I think uh, they'll be excited to come. Uh, it's a night, hopefully, you know, hopefully they don't have 10 exams on Friday, uh, and they'll be ready to have some fun at our game. What have you been able to learn about Ball State? I know you coached against them in the MAC, but what have you been able to learn about them since Sunday? Yeah, I haven't been. It's been a while since I've played against them, that's for sure. I just keep getting older. But uh, they're a good team. Their setter's really good. Uh, they've got a middle who's incredibly efficient, very fast, probably unlike most middles that we've seen all year. I couldn't necessarily pinpoint one that's like her. And so we tried to show it on video today. We tried to simulate it a little bit, uh, but we don't necessarily have that player in our gym. Uh, uh, so uh, they're pretty good, and we'll have our hands full, uh, really fast stuff to middles and then slower stuff on the outside, uh, again, which also is just different than we're used to in our gym. We just talked to Hattie. She's coming from small town Wisconsin. How did you know that she was going to be able to make a big time Well. Sometimes with those kids, you know, you ask the question, how many sports are they playing? How long have they been playing volleyball year-round? What are their habits? And, you know, in Hattie's case, it's a two-hour drive to a club practice two days a week, and there's things she can't be at because she's playing multiple sports. And, and so we just thought with the physical things that she's capable of doing, that, you know, if she took some time and was a decent learner, that she could be pretty good. And she went off red shirt last year. And it didn't come right away. It wasn't, you know, October, she was ready to go. But through the course of spring, and then even through non-conference, you know, her numbers were not great through non-conference. But by the time we got to conference, she was 10 matches in and more and more comfortable and just started to excel. What did she go Point scoring from the middle position is huge. You know, if you can get, we got two of them that are doing it. So, you know, we got to ask teams, what are you going to stop? If you're going to take away our outsides, Hattie and Carson will try and get you. If you're going to take away middle, the teams are certainly capable of scoring. So, points in all positions is valuable. Is there anything you're taking from that biggest championship against Creighton, learning from that and taking into this? Absolutely. You know, we haven't got the opportunity to play a lot of five setters. Uh, we didn't play a lot of teams with two really good left sides like we saw. And so during the match, we were able to, you know, flip around and try some things to try and get some stops. And we were trying to simulate some of that today uh, because we're certainly seeing a bunch of good refs through, through the rest of the way. Obviously, it's trying to be a long time to make it the last time you're going to get to it. In the last couple of years, what do you think that thing that's missing gave you today? Well, we, we've had some, you know, we've dealt with some adversity. I mean, you know, last year we had two starters go down in a 10-day span for the year. You know, career, I should say career season-ending injuries. Um, you know, in a 10-day span, that's pretty rough. The year before that, you're dealing with COVID and, and you, know, you get shut down two weeks before the conference tournament. You play 12 matches that week. In 19, you go back, two outside hitters were down as well. So really the last time we've been playing in this thing in full force, is 2018. And other teams deal with injuries too. It's certainly not just, oh, we're the only one for us. Uh, but we have had a couple of unlucky breaks uh, through the last couple of seasons. And right now we're in pretty good shape. We're not 100%, but we're in pretty good shape. So hopefully we can make it up. When you think about the season, you guys had multiple streaks last uh, season. What do you think the team did during those streaks that you can carry over? I thought there was times they played really low error and high points for so we're trying to score 19 points a game and give away less than seven. When you're doing that, you know, five out of six sets in a weekend, 3-0, 3-0, it can be pretty effective. And so when, when we're playing efficient and scoring, those, that combination of two games, it can be tough to beat us. Obviously, you're focused on the ball state, but kind of what you think of the full throttle. 
Uh, it should be great. It should be fun. Uh, you know, Ball State's going to be a load to handle the right state. Uh, G2 match is hopefully going to get out of the right state. They're up in the high 20s in terms of wins. They haven't brought many. Georgia Tech's been inside of the top 15 all year, so there's going to be some good teams on display.